In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a batch run in R. By batch run, I mean run a whole bunch of programs at the same time. For anyone who's been around R for any length of time at all, you probably know this source function, which runs a single program from another program. Kind of like an include. What we're going to discuss today is this function source all from the common package. It looks like a base R function, and that's kind of the theme of this package, functions that should be in base R but are not. And what this function does is run a whole directory of programs. So I just passed this function a directory, programs directory here, which has a handful of programs in it, and it is now going through all of those and running each of them in turn. And when it completed, you can see it returned a data set here, res, and that data set shows me which programs ran, the start time, the end time, the status, and some messages. These errors and warnings here have been generated intentionally for illustration purposes, and the statuses show us that where those succeeded without any errors or warning, um, one of them had an error and one of them had a warning. The output was created here and the logs were created here. Now I happen to be using the logger package which generates these message files when there is an error, but if you're using a different log package, that's fine, you just won't get these. And so that's how the function works, very simple. Now I know what you're gonna ask next which is, well, what if I don't actually want to run all of the programs? What if I only want to run some of them? So for instance, here I have these two test programs here, and I'd like to run everything else except these test programs. So on this function, there's a parameter here, exclude, which allows me to exclude some programs from the batch run and it will take wildcards. And so this parameter here allows me to exclude all the programs that begin with the word test, which is these two here. So that seems pretty good. Let's run this. And when this runs, it will run these demog programs and this AE program and show us the results of what happened. And there it is, the test programs are gone and the other ones ran. That same parameter, the exclude parameter takes a vector, it can take a vector of exclusion criteria. And so this one right here is going to exclude those same test programs, plus also the AE program. Let's say I wanted to run just the demog programs and there it is, just the demog programs. You could do the same thing with an inclusion on this pattern parameter, also takes a wildcard. So this is saying that I want to run all the programs in this directory that end with the word demog, which should be these three right here. And there they are same results. And likewise, this pattern parameter takes multiple inclusions, uh, can take a vector of inclusions. So this one here is going to run all the demog programs plus the AE program, and then show us the results. And there's the results. So that's pretty good. Now this next example will discuss a topic you may not be thinking about, which is where that program runs. So if I were to just source a single program here with the good old source function, it would run in my current environment and you could see that all the variables that got generated in that program show up in my 
environment list. I'm going to clear this out. And notice that when I run that same program, tdemog, with an inclusion criteria in the source all function, I do not get anything in my global environment. It ran successfully, but this thing is empty except for the return value of that function. Why is that? Well, that's because of this isolate equals true parameter, which is actually the default on this function. So isolate means for every program that runs in the batch, I want to run it in its own environment. And that's good because you generally don't want these programs stepping on top of each other's variables. It can cause weird bugs that are hard to figure out. And now what happens when you say isolate equals false? Well, if you put isolate equals false, then that's going to run it in your current environment, just like the source function does. And there's sometimes good reasons for doing that. So for instance, if you have a directory of utility functions, several utility programs, and you want to load all of them up into your environment, um, if you were to have isolate equals true, it would not load those into your environment. And therefore, if you were to call one of those utility functions, so get titles here is a utility function in this utilities folder, I get an error because it doesn't exist in this environment. On the other hand, if you were to say isolate equals false, it will run it in your environment. And therefore, when you execute that function, it will work. So it depends on your situation, whether or not you want to isolate things or not. Now let's look at one more example. Now there's a difference between a bash run and a background run, but this function can also be run in the background. So what I'm going to do here is run my demog programs again in the background. And then once that's done, I get my results back log the results. And one thing to note about the background runs here in our studio, because it's running in the background, it's not running at the highest priority, which means it's kind of slow. So now that this is done, we can see my three programs ran, the messages were produced. And if I were to go into the log, look at this background log, I can see the results of that background batch run. And that is one way to create a batch job in R.